Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, an honest edition at Superman for the Sega Genesis brought to us by Sunsoft. Sunsoft, which was given the rights to some of the DC comic characters, including making many Batman titles, were also in charge of making Superman titles, but unfortunately, this is the only one that actually was released. They planned on porting this game over to the Super Nintendo, and it also was an intended NES game as well for Superman. That game was later changed to Sunman, and then overall was decided never to be released, and was only found many years later. Superman on the Sega Genesis, while a better overall game than some of the other Superman titles that have come out, is still not necessarily the most fun superhero game to play. The game features five different levels with various villains from the Superman comics, and has you completing a pretty basic goal of just, well, completing each stage. Anyway, here we go with Superman for the Sega Genesis. After seeing a cool little intro of Clark Kent running into the phone booth and then bursting out of Superman, we then get to see the newspaper article for the first level, proclaiming that some kids have gone missing, and then Superman busts through the newspaper article, and we begin level 1. Now, level 1 being in Metropolis, you're running along all these different rooftops fighting different types of robots and other machines that are trying to take you out. The controls are pretty basic for Superman, being mainly having a jump button and a punch button. However, you also have a special ability button that is represented by whatever special ability you currently have for Superman located in the lower right corner. You only have one of these super moves at a time, either the spin, the punch, or while flying, the heat vision, and, once it's filled up, you can use that ability, with the exception of Heat Vision, which can be used at all times. Once you use the Super Punch or Spin, you'll have to wait for it to regenerate before you can use it again. And only the Super Punch can be used to actually affect enemies. The game also nicely keeps track of your score, though there is no high score counter once completing the game. And then, of course, you have your health meter on the far left with your health being representing in red, and when you're facing a boss character, theirs being represented in yellow below you. While Superman can jump into the air while running in order to actually do a kick downwards, unfortunately, just doing a normal jump standing still, you're not able to actually do the drop kick, which ends up being really effective against certain enemies. The other cool thing about Superman is he actually can do a high jump as well when you hold up on the D-pad and then press the jump button, you'll jump much higher, and you'll need to do this especially in level 2 to reach a few different areas. Once completing the first area of level number 1, you start with a flying area where you're going up a building. There's all these enemies dropping rocks on you from inside the different windows, similar to a level that we saw in Bart's Nightmare. Then you also have all the enemies popping on the left and right, alternating between each one, firing different lasers at you, and then a giant UFO-like thing moving back and forth as well, which you can punch to knock away from you. Once you reach the top of the building, though, it's your first boss fight, and you have to battle the Prankster, one of Superman's, well, I guess a little bit lesser-known villains. He has mainly one type of move that he'll use over and over again, and that's the ability to shoot flowers up into the air. When the flowers come down, they end up exploding, so make sure that you're out of the range of any of the flowers when doing so. Once your punch meter fills up at any point, please do that move in order to do a lot of damage to the prankster. You'll then have to just keep doing your normal punches till the super punch refills. Every so often, he may float up, popping a bubble from his mouth, floating up into the air for a few seconds, and then once he reaches the top, the bubble will pop and he will fall back down to the ground. Once you've defeated all the health of the prankster, you've completed round number one, and you move on to level two. Level number two starts off in like kind of a mansion, but then you'll soon be in the underground, which you can clearly see is some kind of base that's creating all these robots. Here we also use the spin ability for the first time. At the very end, it tells you very easily that you're supposed to spin at a certain spot, and by doing so, you end up going down to the bottom level. Once down here, you can punch open this beam to the left and go through to the next area. There's a couple of beams in the level, though, that can only be destroyed with the Super Punch, which is a little bit weird since some can be destroyed with just normal punches. 
This level is also a little bit of a maze, having a couple of different dead ends that you can run into, but definitely nothing too difficult. After heading to the very bottom here, jump over to the right and start climbing upwards. Once you reach up to this level, you'll have to go over to the right side first. Unfortunately, I forgot about this and ended up climbing all the way up before I dropped back down, because you need to get the super punch that's located in the upper right corner of this area, then you can climb back up. Over to the right here, use the super punch in order to destroy the beam here, saving some more children, which is kind of a weird thing, but overall it actually is a comparison you can make between now Superman and Michael Jackson, both having Sega Genesis games where they save children. Destroy these robots over to the right, and then wait for the super punch to regenerate again so you can destroy the next beam. Destroying this beam frees some more kids, but it also replenishes your super punch. Now head back over to the left past the ladder. After watching out for a couple of robots, you'll end up meeting up with the boss for this area. Duck down underneath and use the super punch when possible and just keep punching at him. Just be careful that when he moves up a little bit more before charging up the beam again, that you keep backing up with him so you can avoid getting hit by it. Just be sure to of course duck underneath the blast and you'll have no issue here. By defeating him, you also get the spin ability again and can spin over to the left to drop down to the next part. Once up here, use your normal punches in order to destroy this beam and then continue over to the right. When dropping down here, there's going to be a bunch of lasers firing up. They start over on the left side and work their way over to the right, so they're not too tricky to dodge. You can also grab a full health restore over in the lower right corner. Once over here, jump up, trying to avoid as many missiles as you can, and then jump over to the left to meet Metallo for the first time. You'll have to fight this boss a couple of times here, and this is the first battle with him. Metallo the robot of course uses kryptonite beams in order to severely hurt Superman. The only one though that's a real pain is the one that he fires directly at you in a wave type blade like that one there, because that's the only one that can hit you while ducking in front of him. When he's getting ready to do that one, which is when he opens up his chest, just be sure to jump up in the air to avoid getting hit by it. During the second fight, which is pretty much the same as the first, you'll have a harder time dodging that beam since you're in a much smaller area. The area you're in is the subway train that we're about to enter now. This is one of the toughest areas of the whole game, because you're in a very small confined space, and the robots take up a very large amount of space inside the subway train, and there's a lot of them constantly coming at you. One of the worst is the spiders. These crawl along the ceiling, and you won't be able to jump up and hit them since you can't get high enough to do the Superman normal punch, since for some reason you can't attack in the air unless you jump a certain height. Do your best to avoid as many of these little spiders as possible, as you can see when they do hit you when he drops them, they do a lot of damage to you. If you're able to make it through the entire train, you'll reach the end and fight Metallo once again. This fight is pretty much the exact same as before, but you won't be able to jump over him. So what you'll have to do is thankfully running into him doesn't hurt you. So when he's getting ready to charge up especially the blade-like weapon, be sure to run through him so you can avoid getting hit by it. He can jump off screen to the far left side, so you won't be able to hit him when he does so, but he won't fire at you either. Punch him with your normal punches, every time you get a fool charged up with the super punch, be sure to knock him down, and eventually you'll be able to deplete all his health and move on to level number 3. Level number 3 starts really kind of the second half of the game, as you'll try to rescue Lois Lane now from level 3 through level 5. Level 3 starts off, and you'll be flying over water. You'll see a shark fin moving back and forth in the water, and it's actually kind of funny, because this is actually Mr. Mixelplex. 
and he's going to attack you in a few different ways throughout the next couple of levels, but you're unable to hurt him, and you really just have to dodge whatever attacks he ends up doing to you. After flying for a short distance, you'll land on top of this very large ship. Head over to the right, dodging pretty much the same similar type enemies that we've already been seeing throughout the game. When you reach the end of the ship, you'll have to do battle with two robots at once, and once you defeat them, you'll be able to take off again. With these two robots, since they're pretty easy to tangle with, use Superman Super Punch if you can on one of them, and then jump over to the other one and start normally punching it as it slowly backs up, ducking underneath all the blasts that it does. Eventually, you'll be able to get your Super Punch charged back up, and you can finish off the robot, and Superman will start flying once again. Mr. Mixoplex will be back in the water with the shark fin, and now you'll be dodging in and out of a lot of different missiles coming straight at you. Next up, you'll have three robots attacking you. These guys will take a couple of shots with the heat vision, or the take out, and they keep attacking you over and over. Thankfully though, you have a pretty good amount of space to move around, so they aren't too much trouble. Once you defeat all three of them, you'll fly inside of this giant cave. Once inside here, jump up to the upper right so you can grab the ability piece, and you'll end up getting the spin ability so you can immediately spin down to the ground. Take out a few robots, watch out for a few here, and then use the spin ability once it recharges in order to spin again into the ground. Once down here, don't go over to the right, instead wait here for a few seconds for this giant robot to start flying back and forth. Every so often he will drop down and you'll be able to hit him a couple of times, but just do normal jumps and keep punching him and you'll be able to take him out easily. You have to defeat him, because by defeating him, you end up getting the super punch back and you're going to need that in order to destroy a boulder coming up in just a few seconds. Watch out for the little rock guys, and when you make it to the top, there's going to be, of course, a couple more robots waiting to try to bomb you when you make it there. Then, destroy the giant boulder with a couple of the super punches. Thankfully, it takes two shots to destroy it, but you get a full replenishment to the super punch if you're able to jump up into the upper left. Once you destroy the boulder, continue heading down, watching out for more robots as you make your way through. At the end of this area, you'll have another one of those giant robots, but thankfully you don't have to deal with it. Just go past it, and you'll make it to the boss fight for this level. This guy is pretty easy to deal with, as he has a giant jetpack, and he'll keep moving up and down the left and right sides of the screen, firing lasers. The thing about it is, you'll be able to either slightly fly above the lasers, or slightly below the lasers, depending upon which direction he's going, and keep launching in shots with the heat vision. Every so often, he will do a little bit of a circling motion, which can be a little bit tricky to dodge, but thankfully he doesn't do it often. Another move that he will do from time to time is move up and down into kind of a diagonal pattern, dropping some bombs, but the bombs only drop a few inches before they end up exploding, so as long as you stay below a certain distance, they won't be able to hit you. And then he'll go right back into the same pattern of just slowly moving up and down the left and right sides, allowing you easily to hit him with the heat vision. Once he's destroyed, you complete it level 3. Level number 4 has Superman traveling into space after the rocket that contains Lois Lane, and we have another big flying segment. You should be used to the flying by now, and this entire level is, well, Superman flying. You'll have various different robots here, and after a little bit, you'll get to a stop point where four robots will be spinning around you. Keep your eye on Superman mainly in the middle so you can dodge all the laser blasts that are coming at you. Then, just keep hitting the attack button, so you'll eventually just keep firing straight. 
hitting whatever robot ends up passing directly in front of you. Eventually, you'll be able to hit each of the robots enough to defeat them, and once you destroy one robot, of course, it gets a lot easier, so just keep repeating the process until all four robots are defeated, and you move on to the second half of level number four. Here, there's a lot of enemies coming at you on screen, and it can be a little bit difficult at times in order to try to avoid everything. Like I said before, I like to keep my eyes on Superman himself instead, so I can see when things are getting close to him, so then I can easily move in and out. This is another level where Mr. Mixelplex will make his presence known, as every so often he will emerge from kind of a black hole, and he'll end up firing a few extra rocks or projectiles at you. After getting out of the giant asteroid field, you'll come to this giant spaceship that will attack you, and this is the boss for the level. It doesn't have a health bar, but what it has is it has five different compartments that are going to be firing at you, and you'll have to destroy each one in order to defeat it. Just focus once again your eyes on Superman himself and keep firing over and over again. For the first bit of the battle, when you're mainly focusing on the center eye, which easily takes the most amount of hits, just keep pressing that attack button over and over again and moving Superman up and down. Since it doesn't matter what part of the ship you hit during the beginning parts until you end up destroying one of them, you can just keep mashing that attack button and you'll hit something with your lasers. Once you destroy the center eye, then focus on either the top or bottom guns first. Usually I prefer to start with the bottom two, destroy them, and then move on finally to the top two. Once there's only two guns left though, it's a lot easier and simpler of a battle, and once you destroy both of them, we move on to the fifth and final level of the game, where we get to save Lois Lane and take on Brainiac. Level 5, the final level, is a giant spaceship. Start off by moving through the corridors as you'll be flying with Superman through the whole level, but for the first parts of the level, you'll have a lot more control over him as you'll be able to fly in any direction you want. Make your way through the corridor, taking out each of the enemies and guns that appear on the tops and bottoms of the ship as you slowly make your way through. Travel down here, take out some more guns, and make your way over to the left. Thankfully, you can just get one or maybe two guns to appear on screen at once, and then you can easily backtrack backwards in order to avoid getting too many enemies on screen at one time. Go up here, Brainiac will seemingly talk to you for a few seconds, and then you'll be teleported to the next part of the ship. Once you enter in here, it's more of the same. Just keep moving forward throughout the little bit of a maze-like path, and you should easily be able to find yourself at the next portal. There are a few new enemies introduced throughout the areas, but it doesn't make anything really too much more difficult than it already is. The third area, though, is different, as you'll have six different directions to go to. And in the end, none are really correct as you'll have to come back to the center after exploring four of the main areas and defeating this giant alien. There's four of these aliens in this area, one in each corner, and you'll have to defeat them all before you're able to move on to the next screen. Thankfully, these guys are very easy. They have no projectiles, but they do take up a large amount of screen space. So what you'll have to do is, of course, avoid when they run directly at you and go underneath of them when they do their jumps. It may take a few seconds to get used to the fighting against the first one, but once you have that down, you'll have no problem with all the rest of them because they do the exact same things. Thankfully, they also give you a nice little health bar for each one, so you can easily tell how much damage you have left in order to defeat each of the aliens. What I like to do is, after defeating the first two on the bottom, when I head back up and I have to make my way up to the top portion with the last two, I stop by either the left or right middle sections. 
There's a few enemies here, but there's also full health replenishment at the end of both sides, so at any point you get low, be sure to travel down those corridors so you can pick up the health. Then travel up to the top and choose either the left or right side and take on the next alien. This battle, of course, is more of the same, and it should really just come as second nature by this point. Once he's been defeated, head over to the right and take out the fourth and final one of these giant aliens. Once you've defeated all four of them, then head back and go into the center part where you'll finally be teleported to the next area. During this segment, it's one of those scrolling screen type areas. So you'll have full control of whatever direction you want to move Superman in, but the screen is starting to slowly scroll by. This is also the final area of the game. The first part of this starts off with a very small corridor and eventually will slowly start to open up more and more, and you'll have a ton of missiles coming at you, and eventually these spinning blade enemies will start spawning as well. After a few of them, Brainiac will end up showing up in his giant vehicle here. This is a pretty easy battle, but it's not the final fight. Keep firing the laser at him over and over again, and just be sure to stay just a little bit out of the reach of the laser by being slightly underneath of it. This still gives you plenty of space in order to keep hitting him with the heat vision. Every so often he will stop wherever he is and charge forward, so be sure to duck underneath or go above him to avoid being charged into you. You're not going to get any extra health during this segment, so you want to conserve as much health as possible during this boss fight. Thankfully that's pretty easy to do so, but the penalty of him running into you will cost you a lot of health. Once he's been defeated, Brainiac will start following you through the rest of the level. He has a force field around him so you won't be able to fire at him, and if you do fire at him he'll just block the shot or go right through him. Then for the second half of this segment, what happens is you'll have more spinning blades and the corridor will shrink some. You'll then be introduced to the worst enemies during this segment which is on the tops and bottoms of the screen, you'll have different things that will keep moving up and down trying to squash you. Thankfully, the first few are easy to deal with, but be careful not to even run into them, even if they're not going to squash you, just running into them can cause you severe damage. After the slow-moving bigger ones, you'll have a couple of little corridors, and then you'll have to deal with some aliens firing at you, and then some fast-moving ones of the same types of crushers. Wait for the right opportunity and then fly in between the crushers as they're up, so of course you don't end up getting hit. Some more alien-like creatures will appear in the next segment, so be careful of them as they move back and forth every so often jumping up into the air. They take too many hits to really take out by the time the screen scrolls by, but you'll just want to avoid running into them since they do a lot of damage by just hitting you. You'll then have some even quicker moving ones next up. Fly through these last three and you'll see the background will change as we enter the final boss fight against Brainiac. For this boss fight, you won't be able to hit him with the force field. Instead, he'll stop in one of the corners and then cause three clones to appear and then he'll start spinning throughout the level. Keep your eye on the correct one that started the whole mess and once he ends up stopping and fires these lasers at you, only one of them will be able to get hit. That, of course, is the one that created the other clones. So it's kind of one of those things that tricks your eyes, so you'll have to keep paying attention, as it will get harder because after you've dealt enough damage to him, he'll actually add projectiles to the mix as well. It's going to take at least six or so of these cycles in order to drain all his health as long as you know which one of them is the real Brainiac.
when he creates these projectiles, he creates six of them and they'll start moving around the room, stopping every so often and changing direction if you're away from them. Try to get as many of them if possible to go off screen quickly so you don't have to deal with them while also trying to be in the center of the screen, dodging Brainiac as he spins around the room. After you drained even more health from him, he'll create now two sets of these six projectiles, so it's even trickier to dodge as he spins all around the room. As you see here, I finally have him down to just one more hit point left, but since he does so much damage when he runs into you, you have to be so careful during this fight, and it's a pretty tough boss fight. Once you deliver the last hit to Brainiac though, you can sit back and enjoy the ending to Superman for the Sega Genesis. So after a small congratulations screen with Superman and Lois Lane together, you then have Superman flying through Metropolis as the credits start to slowly scroll by. Sunsoft did a pretty good job of making some great games during the late 80s and early 90s, doing a pretty good job with the Batman license. They tried here with Superman, but it just ends up falling a little bit short of being a classic superhero game. I actually have played Sunman, the beta for the game that was never released, and after playing the Superman game that we did get for the NES, I can say that that game would have at least been more interesting to play overall. It's just too bad that Sunsoft never released it on the NES. And even as of the creation of this video, we really have never gotten a great Superman game. There's been a few decent ones, including the Death and Return of Superman beat-em-up that was available on Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo, but even in the new generation of Batman being reborn with the Arkham games, it'd be nice to see if Superman could get the same treatment. After the credits finish rolling through, we then have Superman standing in front of Metropolis with the M below him and your total score. You can then press the start button and start the game all over again. But that's going to wrap up this edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching and of course, I hope you enjoyed.